All right, what's up guys? Today we're back at the shop. We're gonna be working on the SC again. Um, the last video was actually two days ago. Um, I showed you guys the rear subframe, how I cleaned it up. I ended up putting some new bushings in it and we installed all the control arms and the cleaned up slash, I guess kind of like refreshed uh, knuckles. And also kind of showed you the dual caliper kit. So um, I still haven't ordered calipers yet, so I can't finish that. But today, well, like I said last time, um, we're gonna go and try and weld the diff, maybe clean that up a little bit, get it ready for paint, and then I gotta bring that thing over to work, um, hopefully maybe tomorrow, to try and get those front bushings out so I could get the new solid bushings in. So we're gonna do that first. That hopefully won't take too long because um, a little while ago I actually got the um, fiberglass quarter panels, which are on top of the car right now, and I really kind of want to start cutting this car apart and putting those on. So if I have enough time today, I g actually got out of work early today. So um, hopefully I have some added time. So uh, we'll be able to do that at the same, you know, today as well. So first, I'm going to go grab that diff. I'm going to throw it up on this little table I have over here. And uh, I got to drain the fluid out of it first. <laughs> All right, so this diff weighed a little bit more than I was expecting. And I almost dropped it on myself. But I was able to get it up on this little... Uh, table that I have. So um, now I actually just broke free the, um, the drain one and the fill. What I always do and what you always want to do before you drain it, you always want to make sure you can get the fill open first because you don't want to go and drain all the fluid out and have this one seized and then all of a sudden now you can't fill your diff because um, this one's stuck and you just drained all of it out. So always make sure you can get both of them loose before you go and just start draining. So I got to pull this thing to the edge of the table more because I just have it right there. It's going to drip all over the table. So I'm going to get it right to the edge. I'm going to find a drain bucket. It's probably going to make a mess all over the place, but oh well. And then um, drain it up. Then we'll take this back cover off of it and um, we'll get ready to start welding it. All right, so I've got the diff draining right now, and um, I don't know if this thing's just never been changed before, like fluid, because um, this doesn't look that good. There is a lot of metal on this thing, and it, like when I first pulled this plug out, uh, literally nothing came out first. It had to like glob out a giant, like basically glob of metal, and then the fluid started coming out. The food itself doesn't look that dark. Um, I kind of spilt on the ground. But that's not too good. But luckily, I really don't care about the inside of this diff. As long as I'm able to weld it, then that's fine. Like, you know, I, this is an open diff. So if that was like, if this was an LSD and I was wanting to keep it LSD and that came out like that, I'd be pretty concerned. But since that. This is just going to be welded, and it's an open diff. I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. All right. So I just took the diff off of that little table because I got to kind of like flip it upside down to get the cover off without it like leaking the rest of the fluid all over the place. But so I cleaned up the little mess that was on the ground over there, and there was like literally like chunks on the ground, like in the little puddle. So I'm kind of concerned about that, but I'm about to go take the cover off right now and uh, we're, we're gonna be able to see what actually happened in there. All right, so I just got the cover off and um, right now I have it draining right down there, but um, <laughs> there is a lot more damage than I thought there was going to be. Luckily, the area where there is damage, which I'll show you guys in a little bit right now, I just, like I said, I still just have it draining. Oh, I'll show you guys after that. But the area that is damaged, luckily, is the four spider gears inside the open diff. All of those teeth are chewed up. So I don't know, I'm not sure how that happened, but all those teeth on those gears are chewed up. Luckily, the big pinion gear or the ring gear, and then the pinion, both are still perfectly fine. There's no nicks out of them, there's no chunks, n not even any like scratches, like thankfully on those. 
So that is still good. Luckily, those spider gears were going to be welding, so they're not going to be moving anymore. Plus, it, it doesn't matter if they're going to be damaged or not. So the diff is still good. I'll still be able to use it. Um, I'm going to have it drain right now. Then we'll weld it up. So right now, I think um, we're going to start cutting these quarter panels, maybe, since I've got some time to waste until the uh, diff is done draining out. All right, so now normally when installing wide bodies, I wouldn't recommend doing it this exact way that I'm doing it now. But on like let's just say I was doing it on a BRZ or something that's not going to be a drift car, I would put you know, a tape outline all the way around it and then draw on the tape and make sure everything's nice and careful, nice and neat, and not going to nick anything else. But since this is my my own car, my drift car, I just went ahead and made a permanent marker line all the way up and around. And then all the way over here. It kind of gets thin over here, but I can still kind of see it. And it goes up and around, and then straight down. I'm not, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do around this area. Because I kind of want to have it cut, like, everything, like, even, like, the under, like, body panels um, cut in this area as well. So everything, like, below the tail lights just open. But... So for now, I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna cut it there, and then if I need to cut it more later on, I can just chop it off right there. But um, at the same the same time, these have kind of like a, a raised flare, so it actually kind of sticks out a little bit. So it's gonna be like a little bit wider. But, um, so I'm not really sure how that's going to mount. Um, if anything, I'll just mount the bumper straight to that, that flare piece up there. And then, so then at that point, all of this could just be chopped out. So I'm planning on chopping all of this stuff out too. And then um, I'll probably just go from here, kind of like what I did with the Impreza all the way up. So then the uh, the stock rocker panel stays. And I'll just do it like that. And then for what I've realized now is that Matt used basically an entire cutoff wheel the other day. And so the only other one I have here <clears throat> is this used one which is already pretty well worn down so I'm not hopefully I'll be able to do that entire panel and maybe I'll just do one today and then uh, I'll have to go to probably the hardware store tomorrow and grab some more so then I could do the opposite side so let's just see if I have enough on this one right here just to get this side done that cutoff wheel that I had uh, did not last long at all. Um, I knew this before I started that these quarter panels are like extremely, extremely thick and the cutoff wheel literally just like got disintegrated from just going down, straight down. That's all it took. So I'm, what I'm gonna do, since that I'm motivated, I wanna get this thing cut out, I'm gonna go head over to Home Depot probably pick up a couple cutoff wheels and then uh, we're gonna get back at it. That way at least it'll give me more time that this thing will drain out too. all the way off I ended up taking some of the uh, inner um, wheel well area out too just because it was a pain to try and get all of the uh, the spot welds off from there which I needed to cut that area anyway so basically all the way down from here all the way up and around is all trimmed now too and here we go so now I gave myself about an inch all the way down and all the way around so then um, <clears throat> 
instead of just using self tappers, I'm going to use some riv nuts in there instead, just to make it a little bit, a little bit better than just self tappers. So now I'm just going to clean up the edge a little bit, and then we'll basically be done with that right now. So if anything, now I'm going to grab the quarter panel for this side, and drill a couple holes, and use like the Clico pins to put it in place to see what it looks like. All right, so this is the new over fender. This is the, uh, I think it was just the Duraflex one. And um, it's just, basically it's just fiberglass. It's a little bit flexible, which is actually pretty good. And um, right now, I only drilled just three holes for now, just to uh, Clico pin it up onto the car. So those three right there. And um, just gonna Clico pin it. If you guys don't know what these are, instead of just using self tappers or screws, you could just use this thing. This is pretty affordable too, and it's nice and easy. So you don't have to keep on like screwing and unscrewing and making a hole bigger or just anything like that. That's nice and easy. And um, once Matt is all set over there, I need him to uh, help me put this thing up. Just got the panel on um, right now it's just clicoed in just by like four of them and there's a couple areas I'm just gonna have to trim a little bit like this isn't too bad right here but um where is it over here it doesn't really line up hundred percent like right here it contacts but this is the area where I was debating on if I was just gonna cut it all out anyway so this all might be cut out and then besides that it just needs to trim where the door is because right now it overhangs just a little bit so I don't think the door will open oh no or the door will open but uh, I'm still just gonna have to trim that area right there just in case if it tries to snag on it but then besides that it's all bolted in I don't know how much wider it is than stock it was a, the ad said like 50 millimeter which is two inches but the when I test fit this when the regular quarter panel was on it wasn't really much wider maybe like maybe an inch wider than stock but like from the front it has this piece that flares out so i don't know we'll just have to wait until i put the wheels back on because the wheels just about sat flush with the quarter panel so then i'll be able to see how it sits afterwards all right, so since the quarter panel is all set for now, now it's time to go back to the diff. I let it drain a little bit, and uh, we're gonna show Matt and you guys what the damage is on the inside. So, all the gears right here are all messed up. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera. So all of those are messed up. And then like, if you spin this around, oh yeah, like all the way around, and then actually it binds right here until it starts moving again. All the way around, they're all chewed. Which luckily, <laughs> luckily for me, I'm able to just weld all of that and then there goes any problem that I would have. Because this uh, gear all the way around is fine and I just look down in there at the pinion and that's fine too. So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit more and then uh, we're gonna get ready to weld it. So I just got finished up welding up the diff. So what I usually do is I do each of the corners of the spider gears. I do like the side of this spider gear and then I'll do the like a little bit of the sides of the other, the opposite spider gears. I can't really get my welder in to do the side of that one right in there. So that, that one's fine. I, I have plenty enough on either side that it shouldn't break apart, hopefully. But um, so now that's all back, that's all done. Now basically I just need to clean up the surface around here 
I need to take out this magnetic drain plug again because it's all like covered in metal again. But um, just gotta clean it up, reseal it, and then um, just gotta put some fluid in it. There, all the way around. This black stuff gets everywhere. Right, so that's the top, that's the bottom. Boom, just like that. <clears throat> there we go. Sealed. Diff's all sealed up, that quarter panel's all cut. Next thing I gotta do is just bring that diff to work, get the bushings uh, basically pressed out of it and then that's ready to go back into the subframe. Then at that point, the subframe's ready to go back in. So basically, we can get this thing basically rolling pretty soon. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. See ya.